Excellencies. Excellence. Godātie konferences dalībnieki, kolēģi, draugi. Mēs esam sapulcējušies šodien Rīgā konferencē, kas pēc manām domām būs... ...ēsīl, for its 12th annual conference, how international law works in times of crisis is topical and challenging. It focuses our attention on the full range of challenges and threats confronting the international community. Issues related to security and uh, territorial integrity, issues related to migrant and refugee flows, financial crises, environmental crises, political challenges and crises, all interrelated and complex. The conference will focus on these issues and at the same time look at the functionality and mechanisms of international law and ways to respond to the challenges uh, confronting the international community. We're gathering as a group of legal scholars and experts, government representatives, policy makers, members of the diplomatic community, and importantly, members of civil society, all with one common aim, to understand, safeguard, and strengthen the European international legal order at a time when it's being threatened and challenged sometimes from unexpected uh, ways and unexpected sides. Riga Graduate School of Law is a small law school established in the second half of the 1990s with the specific aim to build capacity and, and assist uh, in the transition of the newly liberated and independent Baltic states. The 25 years that have since passed are a time of remarkable achievements and accomplishments and are also a reminder and demonstration of the importance of international and European law. Riga Graduate School of Law has meanwhile developed and consolidated as now a flourishing, self-standing institution. And when I look at all of you, at such an eminent group of scholars and experts and policymakers gathered here today, I truly feel that we have come of age as a law school. It's been a great inspiration and honor to cooperate with the other organizers of this conference. We very much appreciate the cooperation with the Constitutional Court of Latvia, the Ministries of Justice and Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Latvia, and importantly, of course, the European Society of International Law. I'd like to give special thanks to the program committee and a special tribute to the chair of the organizing committee, Professor Ineta Zimele. But first and foremost, I want to thank all of you for joining us here in Riga today. I'm very excited about the program in the coming three days, and I want us all to have a wonderful conference. Welcome to Riga. And I would now like to invite Aldis Lavins, Chairman of the Constitutional Court of Latvia, to address the group. Excellencies, highly esteemed Mr. Rector, highly esteemed Mr. President of ISIL, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, uh, I feel truly satisfied that Constitutional Court can celebrate its 20th anniversary by participating in two very important events. At the end of May, uh, constitutional justices from uh, Europe and from neighboring regions and as well justices from European Court of Justice and justices from European Court of Justice gathered in Riga and we discuss uh, issues concerning uh, judicial activism, namely uh, admissible and uh, necessary competence of court courts dealing with topical law and uh, with uh, uh, law policy issues, uh, both on national and on uh, international level. 
As we know, judges should act strictly within their competence and solve problems within the framework of particular cases. But I need to admit that sometimes uh, law issues should be and needed be uh, solved in broader context. And here is your role. Legal experts, legal scholars can propose solutions for much more broader context. And therefore, uh, you have a great role uh, in ensuring uh, environment governed by the rule of law. In court rulings, actually, we can quite often find direct and indirect references uh, to findings of legal scholars. And as well, uh, politicians uh, in drafting process of uh, normative acts quite often uh, in order to strengthen their argumentation, quote legal scholars. And such kind of process quite obviously shows that your written books, your published articles, and discussions among scholars plays a very significant uh, role. And in this moment, let me say these words, dear legal scholars, experts, Actually, your knowledge imposes upon very important obligation to society. And this role, your role, your commitment to society should be underlined, especially due to the fact that current geopolitical situation has brought to foreground a very serious challenges. I mean economic crisis, refugee crisis, solidarity crisis within Europe itself, constantly growing terrorism, and armed conflicts. Dear colleagues, these are challenges which cannot be solved within boundaries of one single country. These are challenges which have pre predominantly supranational nature. We know that international law has been developed exactly by the goal to provide necessary measures how to deal with and how to solve so-called supranational issues and challenges. Actually, in our globalized world, it means that exactly international law should be perceived as an instrument which could really help to protect our ideals, our democratic values and traditions. But current trend of events, unfortunately, raises immensely serious questions. I mean, are these measures provided by international law sufficiently effective? How to use them? Can these measures be flexibly adapted to new global circumstances? These issues and more other issues will be discussed during the course of next days. And dear colleagues, uh, ASIL conference no doubt is a most appropriate place to discuss these issues. This conference is a most prestigious event for international law society. It gathers more than 400 well-known legal experts from more than 40 countries. And Constitutional Court has a great honor to organize this immensely important event in one team with Riga Graduate School of Law and with Ministry of Justice. As well, we are delighted to cooperate with ISIL, an organization which main goal is to contribute to the rule of law. And of course, we highly appreciate this possibility given to Latvia to host this event and here in Riga to discuss relevant international law issues. Finally, 
I would like to say that Constitutional Court in Latvia, interpreting Satversme, which is our constitution, always is searching for a solution which ensure balance, balance between constitution and international commitments. And in my opinion, this is wise approach, because where balance rules and harmony exists, there is a peace and concord. And I wish that during these days, a lot of ideas will be voiced. And our forum, our Riga forum, can propose efficient, wise, and balanced uh, solutions for these mentioned very serious challenges. Let this event be successful for all of you and for all of your countries. Thank you. Chairman Lavins, thanks so much for these uh, inspirational and important words from the perspective of a legal practitioner and the judiciary. Very welcome. And I now would like to invite uh, Professor Andre Nolkemper, Dean of the Faculty of Law of the University of Amsterdam, and most importantly, President of the European Society of International Law. Excellencies, colleagues and friends, on behalf of the board of the European Society, I welcome you to the 12th annual meeting of the European Society. This meeting comes at a place and a time which is important to the society. In my editorial to the ESO newsletter of March, I wrote that the society has the ambition to provide a European forum for European discussions on international law. I also noted that until now, membership and our presence has been relatively limited to few states. Our membership overwhelmingly consists of members of Germany, the United Kingdom, Switzerland, the Netherlands, and Italy. But if our, and we have been relatively absent from places like Bosnia, Herzegovina, Hungary, Romania, Ukraine, or indeed Latvia. In a way, this does not, does not need to surprise. We are a young society. We are in our 12th year. And in 12 years, we can't be everywhere at the same time, and we can't be relevant for all. But if we want to accomplish our mission to be relevant for the discussions on international law, it is critical that we are present visible and relevant throughout Europe. The European society does not exist for its own sake. We exist to contribute, to allow for discussions on matters of international law, to contribute to discussions on actual topics. Therefore, it's highly important that we are present here in Riga and connect to the history, the political context, the participants from this region. If our mission indeed is to contribute to European discussions, the theme of this event is very well chosen. The topics that will be discussed in the coming days, ranging from ISIL to migration to climate change to security, are critical and deserve our attention. But perhaps we should not be carried away by the topicality of all of these crises. And it may well be that, in a sense, they all reflect some more fundamental continuities and structures in international law. And it is precisely the function of meetings like this where we can bring together the membership with different traditions, backgrounds, and expertise to connect these various crises and reflect on how we can address them. Of course, this can only be done if we can actually speak out. I do want to take this opportunity 
to express my deep concern over the fact that some members of ESIL felt that they could not be present here for fear of their position or even security in Turkey. The freedom of academic thought and academic expression is critical to the European Society of International Law. And any restriction on that freedom undermines the rule of law that the ESIL aims to contribute to, and that is at the heart of international law itself. I hope and trust that the discussions here will demonstrate the value of open discussions on fundamental problems of international law, however controversial and contested they may be. Being, being in a new place like Riga always is a moment for renewal and extension of membership. Our membership is ever increasing. We are now well over 1,100 members and counting. And it's wonderful to welcome new members to the society. Tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., no less, I invite all new members to a breakfast meeting with the board to meet each other and to discuss with the board matters of common interest. I also call on all members, new and existing members, to attend the General Assembly of the Society on Friday afternoon. Compared to some other societies, ESO is a relatively democratic society. As in all cases of democracy, democracy only works if we have participation and involvement. So I, I encourage all of you to attend the General Assembly, participate in the discussions on governments, and most of all, perhaps, participate in the election of new board members. Finally, a few words of thanks are in order. Above all, my thanks go to Inieta Zimele for putting together this wonderful event. We cannot underestimate the effort it takes to put together an event like this. This event is a milestone, a new milestone for the society, and Inieta, thank you very much for your contribution. I also thank the staff of the Riga Graduate School of Law and the Constitutional Court for their support and their assistance in making possible this event. I also take the opportunity to thank Joyce Davis, Administrative Director of ESIL, who almost single-handedly keeps afloat ESIL in all of its ever-growing number of events. Thank you very much, Joyce. And finally, I thank all members of the, society, of the Society who helped to bring about this event as member of the program committee, as member of selection committees for Agora, as chairs of Agora, or in many other roles. The society exists for the membership, and conversely, it is the membership that makes the society and that enab enables events like this. Thank you very much, and I wish you all a great conference. Thank you, Professor Noel Kemper, and recognizing the very important support by also the Parliament of the Republic of Latvia, I am very happy to invite the Deputy Speaker of the Parliament, Inesa Libina Egner, to address us. Excellencies, distinguished participants of the conference, dear ladies and gentlemen, I do feel really honored to address you at the opening ceremony of this conference in the name of the Parliament of the Republic of Latvia. And I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the European Society of International Law and particularly to our outstanding legal scientist, member of the ESIL board, Professor Ineta Ziemel, for an event of this scale taking place here in Riga. Being here, we all are aware of the significance of international law and the role of international treaties. And I am certain that because of this international conference, Latvia and Riga will be once again placed on the international legal arena and as an active member in this field. I would like to remind you that one of the recent significant multi lateral treaties, additional protocol to the Council of Europe Convention of the Prevention of Terrorism, 
also named as a Riga Protocol, has been signed in Riga in October 2015. Riga Protocol concerns a number of counter-terrorism issues with an emphasis on combating the foreign fighters phenomena, giving states additional legal tools to prevent terrorism. Taking this opportunity, um, let me give you a historic perspective to Latvia's strong belief that international law matters. The power of international law has indeed been highly decisive for Latvia and to other Baltic states, Lithuania and Estonia, over the 20th century, due to the fact that a number of countries have never recognized Latvia's occupation and incorporation into the Soviet Union, Latvia was able to maintain continuity of its statehood. 20 years ago, Latvia restored its independence de facto and reinstated the Constitution of Latvia of 1922 with its, with its values of Western democracy and the rule of law. So currently, now August and September this year, we are celebrating 25th anniversary of the restoration of, the, of our diplomatic relations together with a variety of Western countries. Today, there are numerous ongoing international conflicts worldwide, and one of such cases is Russia's aggression towards Ukraine, as well as illegal annexation occupation of Crimean Peninsula. We witness that numerous multilateral and bilateral treaties are being violated by the Russian Federation. Most notably, the principle of territorial integrity of a state, principle of inviolability of state borders, principle of peaceful settlement of disputes, have all been breached. And the doctrine of humanitarian intervention and the doctrine on the rescue of national abroad have been misused. Latvia's experience shows that international law proves its efficiency and is remunerating over the time, even if it takes decades. I truly hope that Ukraine will be blessed to restore its de facto territorial integrity in much shorter span of time. Even in times of crisis and extreme circumstances, we must follow both the spirit and the letter of the law and have full respect for the rule of law. In the context of international relations, we acknowledge that there is no universal law enforcement institution. In dealing with international conflicts, the international society turns to such international bodies as the UN Security Council or OSCE. Nevertheless, regretfully, some of members of the UN Security Council and OSCE are also members or even instigators of international conflicts themselves. This makes the task of conflict settlement more complicated or even unmanageable. This conference on international law in times of crisis once again strengthens the crucial importance of the role of the rule of law. We cannot forget that the greatest value of international law is the inviolable honor and dignity of every human being, despite that there are people suffering in every crisis. Currently, next to the already existing solutions to international crisis, there is an urgent need for the international society for common political will, empathy, and solidarity to tackle uprising challenges of international crisis and to avoid new humanitarian dis disasters. The challenges for the functioning of international law are not likely to be solved before long. However, we should continue to consolidate our efforts in order to allow the international law function in the most efficient way possible. I wish all the participants and all of us interesting debates and look forward to inspiring outcomes and conclusions. Welcome in Riga. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, for this Reminder once again of the real serious context of the conference. And I am very pleased now finally to invite uh, 
the State Secretary of the Ministry of Justice of Latvia, Mr. Ravens Kronbergs. Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, participants of the conference, organizers, I can only subscribe to the previous speeches. And from the perspective of the Ministry of Justice, I would like to reassure that uh, the topic of this conference, in other words, the functioning of international law in times of crisis, is very topical in Latvia, the Baltics, Europe, as well as globally. Thus, we understand that within the scope of this conference, uh, international law matters will be touched upon, su such as uh, armed conflicts, uh, territorial conflicts, terrorism, as well as terroristic organizations. Even though these matters could be considered as key uh, matters in international law, uh, they uh, reiterate the the core of international law. And they topicalize, in turn, other directions or branches of uh, international law, such as human rights. The participants and uh, members of the conference, as well as everyone who is uh, interested in these uh, important aspects of human lives, uh, um, say, environmental law uh, result in sustainable development. I would uh, uh, like to encourage you to find matter uh, answers to the following questions. Uh, whether uh, international law exists in times of crisis only in, only in theory or in practice? I think that you will be able to find answers to these questions. Uh, and. I hope that uh, this conference will serve as a, uh, as a long-awaited platform for tackling topical matters. I would like to thank all organizers, members, and supporters of this conference. Today, I appeared at the conference uh, with flowers in my hands, and these flowers were meant for the person who brought this conference to Latvia. And this very person is the, the already mentioned Professor Ineta Ziemele. Thank you, Madam Ziemele. Uh, may you have a successful conference and a successful discussions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, State Secretary. And we are now concluding the, um, the welcoming speeches. And I would like to invite the participants in the opening discussion on how international law works in times of crisis, which will be chaired by Anne van Aken of the University of St. Gallen. Would you please join us? <laughs> 